Welcome to Classics Confidential. I'm very happy to be in Cambridge today talking to Professor Mary Beard about a new television programme that's, that's going to air next week on BBC Two, right? And it's called Meet the Romans. It's called Meet the Romans. Thank yeah. you very much for coming on Classics Confidential, by the way. Um, Pleasure, Jess. Um, I used to teach her. Yeah, <laughs> I wasn't going to let that scared. one slip, but I'm not scared. <laughs> <laughs> Which Romans are we going to meet? We are going to meet... Um, ordinary ones. I mean, the idea behind the series is that certainly what most of all gets put out on telly is uh, toffs and emperors mm -hmm. and generals and Rome, you know, the capital of yeah. yeah. And this is about ordinary Romans. It's about school kids and women and bakers and butchers and hairdressers. Mm -hmm. And it's an attempt to say, look, actually, you can know about those people too. You know, there that it's not just that these ordinary Romans are kind of hidden from history. Mm -hmm. There's all kinds of things which um, really open up their lives. You can mm -hmm. hear their voices. They speak to you, and we've got some you know, really great ordinary Roman characters. You know, who are going to say, "Hey, listen to me," because you know, you pass by there. You listen to me, because mm. I was a good man, and I dealt in pearls. That sounds like you're talking about a tomb. Is it, what kind of evidence have we got to <laughs> reconstruct the lives of these ordinary Romans? Well, we do it in two ways. Um, you're right. Um, partly tombs. Because I think, in some ways, Roman tombstones are terribly underexploited mm. in in kind of real life gritty history. Mm. And I think that's partly because people look at them in museums and they're written in Latin and you think, oh gosh, you know, that's, and no one ever really spends the time to explain them to you. Mm -hmm. But actually, with very, very little Latin, or even no Latin, and a bit of mm. help from the outside, you can see, you get a little window into the lives of people who are sort of speaking to you from behind the grave, mm -hmm. and beyond the grave. And, I mean, they're, they're just, you know, I think there's, unbelievably rich material that people will have no clue about. I mean, people like um, the lady Alia Potestas, who um, lived in a menage à trois. Right. There's a tombstone put up to this lady, Alia Potestas, probably an ex-slave, put up by one of her lovers. She's living with two male lovers. So we're talking always about the city of Rome and the yeah. East programs. Yeah, yeah but I mean, we're talking basically about the city of Rome. We're, you know, we're a bit, we're a bit fuzzy on the geographical margins. You know, we go twenty, thirty miles sometimes. Right. Um, but we're really interested in in capturing kind of those urban voices mm -hmm. wherever they're actually found. Those urban voices, but talking about how we real people lived. And so, uh, old Potestas is a particular favourite because. Not only do they go on about how wonderful her breasts are, um, but they also say she got... Who went to bed latest in this household? Alia Potestas. Who got up earliest? Alia Potestas. Why was that? Well, we know, because she was a woman and doing the housework. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you just get this little domestic, just domestic scene. Um, so apart from the tombstones, what other kinds of evidence are you looking at? Well, what we do is we, we take the tombstones... Uh, and we take the people that lie behind them and their names and what they did, you know, you know I'm the hairdresser or whatever. Um, and then we try to put them back into the context of the archaeological evidence. So we look at apartment blocks in Austria, we look at high-rise blocks in Rome, mm. we think about bar culture, you know, where did you eat, where did you get your food... Um, we go to ancient bars, and I'm happy to say we go to modern bars. <laughs> modern bars, that was the best bit. They were a lot nicer, I thought. Do you film in the modern bars? Or uh, just we, go there after filming? No? We filmed in the modern bars. Mm. Um, and we're trying to say, look, what's, how can you start to see where these people lived? And there's some, some pretty simple points we're trying to make, but they're ones that I think you, people don't know often enough, mm. which is, you know, what's the image of Rome? Well, most people close their eyes... Um, and they see marble. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and we're trying to say, look, okay, that's partly true. You know, Rome was a grand city, but it was also the first city in the world to have a million people. It's packing people in. Mm -hmm. um, they're living in high rise blocks. They're living maybe six to a room sometimes. They're mm -hmm. sleeping out rough. And even some of those grand marble 
vistas, you know, like the forum, mm. even there you can actually find the traces of the real people who also hung out there. You know, mm. So we spend some time looking at um, all those gaming boards that are mm. scratched into the steps of the Basilica Julia in the forum and say, look, you know, people are just sitting around here, people are hanging out here. It isn't all kind of toffs orating. Yeah. So, so is this quite novel in terms of a way, you know, telling Roman history from the bottom up, or have, have other people had a stab at it as well? Well, there's been a, there's been a noble tradition of it, and you can, and particularly actually in comedy, really, mm. you can go back to well, Jerome Carcapino's Everyday Life in Ancient Rome, it gets yeah. picked up by a funny thing happened to me on the way to the Forum, picked up by Frankie Howard and up mm. Pompeii, so there is a there's, you know, very noble strand of mm. kind of real gritty Roman life, but often slightly comedic or dramatic. And, you know, I think one of the things that was interesting about HBO's Rome was it was it juxtaposed the tops in their palace with the people who also you know, lived in the soldiers living pretty ordinary lives. Mm. But people I think have been a bit frightened away of um, doing doing a kind of historical documentary because mm. people imagine that it's very difficult to see, that there's not much evidence, mm. that and they also imagine that you can't get that kind of sort of face-to-face -face encounter nice. with, with real people uh, and so it, it's all a bit kind of speculative but you know, I think what we're trying to show is that you can make the ordinary you know lives of the innkeeper and his missus in Rome mm. as kind of vivid mm. as um, the lives of princesses, you know, sweating out as they did in I, Claudius, you know, being yeah. depilated in the palace. Like, yeah. I hope we bring out, certainly try to bring out, is that kind of sense of the ancients being both sort of familiar, sort of recognisable, mm. but also in some ways incredibly different. You know, what would it be like actually to be brought up in a world where half the kids die before they were ten? Mm. And how would that make a difference to... to your life, your expectations, your friendships, your families. I mean, you know, if you think, you know, today, what is, you know, what's kind of the worst thing that could happen to parents? It's that like their child dies. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, you know, we'd have almost no contest about that's, you know, that's the mm. twenty-first century's great tragedy for a parent. Now, how does it? How does parenthood work when that's what you expect to happen? Mm. Like, cause it's a problem that applies to 19th century Britain as much as it does to Rome. But you get a very nice take and spin on it in Rome, I think, because you know, people were for a while tempted to say, well, maybe they don't bond with kids. You know, maybe you know, if if you're always expecting to lose one, yeah. then you hold back. You emotionally hold back. Yeah. But that's why I come back to these tombstones and you look at the 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 way they talk about these dead kids in the tombstones mm -hmm. and you know one of one of the ones we talk about is that favorite you know, the 11 year old boy poet that kathy coleman's worked on sulpicius maximus mm -hmm. who does his does his poem like Domitian's games his improvised poem uh, does very well doesn't quite win but does very well you know and then dies it's very soon after I mean, it's a wonderful tombstone in rome which in a very unloved corner of the Monte Martini Museum. Um, oh, yeah. uh, and they, the parents say, he died of hard work. And you think, gosh, he <laughs> died of hard work. And you think, well, maybe they were just very pushy. You know, mm. who made this 11-year-old do this improvised poem about Phyphon and the chariot of the sun? And then he dies, and there he is on his tombstone, Dressed up in his little toga, you think? You know, there's there are all kinds of puzzles, ways in, but also puzzles in this. Can we ever hope to understand something like that? No, of course we can't mm. on that. But we can have, I think, and this is what we're trying to show, I think, in the programmes, we can have a huge amount of fun in wondering what it would be to try to understand. I mean, mm. I think that often with ancient Rome, what's really exciting is not knowing the answer, because usually we don't answer. You know, how many slaves were freed? Where did the slaves come from? You know, we can get part way to that, but we can't know. Mm. So the fun and the intellectual challenge and the intellectual excitement is in thinking about how you might go about knowing. Mm. 
it's the exploration. And I think in many ways that's what gets sort of dumbed out of a lot of modern popular accounts of ancient Rome, whether it's in books or on telly. Because I think there's a tendency to think that what do the general public want? Well, they don't want the problems. You know? mm. They want to know. They want, they want facts. They don't want problems. And if you say, then, well, we haven't really got many facts about the intro. They say, well, come on, we haven't got to tell a story. Because you don't want to bother the pretty little heads of the general public mm. with the difficult bits. And I think that what I found is that people are really interested in the difficult yeah, bits. Yeah. You don't have to talk about it in jargon. You, know, you can forget the classicist jargon mm. and explain it in basic, ordinary terms. And what people really get off on mm. is, OK, so how would you go about reconstructing that life? Yeah, and also, I guess, even if you don't understand something, that in itself can be very eye-opening because it shows you the potential of different ways of doing things. Like your example about grieving for children, I think lots of people would think that is just so, you know, natural and universal, yeah. and then you go back to ancient Rome and see that, you know, maybe there were different ways of... Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, you, the complexity is good. <laughs> yeah, and it holds, you know, it, it holds up a mirror to us, in a way, I think, these, these little lives from ancient Rome, because, you know, one thing we have to remember is that if we were back in ancient Rome, we would not be emperors and princesses. Mm. We would be the hairdressers and the slaves and the accountants and that kind of thing. Yeah. So they are a mirror of us, but they're also wonderfully engagingly distorting mirror of us. So you, they both show up, the only evidence in the ancient world shows up how odd the Romans were, but it also yeah. shows up how odd we are, I think. Yeah. You know, we, we take, we, we, you know, we, we take our own ways of doing things so much for granted that I think if you look at, if you look at how the Romans did, and you imagine what a Roman, you know, what would a Roman find surprising about coming to 21st century Britain? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, all this, you know, respect for other cultures, you know, got all that, because... What's you know, all you know, that about? You know, what's <laughs> all that about? You know, and, you know, also some, you know, tremendously simple things. I'm sure they would be completely gobsmacked at the way we hire children off, um, you know, and put them into their own little rooms and their own little clothes and put their, you know, a baby grow, you know, um, yeah. and get them special books, you know, they should be reading Virgil, shouldn't they? Um, and, uh, and, you know, the idea that we had something called a teenager, even weirder, I mean, Romans might be able to get babies, but teenager, that is completely out. And then we'd find that when people did something wrong, we banged them up in a prison. How weird is that? Would the Romans not have prisons? <laughs> Romans only had a place where you held people before execution. Right. Right. No custodial right. sentence. You don't get, you don't come up before the beak in ancient Rome and get sentenced for six months in the local nick. Yeah. They think this was extraordinary. That's fascinating. Maybe as one last question I could ask you, if there was anyone from your series of programmes that you could meet, who would it be? And what would you ask them? Ah, it, it would be a man who calls himself Calidius Eroticus. Great name! <laughs> he is an innkeeper and he has a great tombstone to himself, Calidius Eroticus, and we think that means Mr. Hot Sex, <laughs> and his wife, Fania Volupta. Right? Right. These I, are made up, okay. They must, yeah, they must be. These yeah. are. These must be the nom de tavern. You know, this is. This is. You know, hot sexy's pub. Yeah. Right? And I would ask him what his real name would be before he changed to Caligula's erotic. But it was probably something really boring. <laughs> yeah, but I'd like to know. Okay. Well, thank you very much for talking to us. Can't wait to see the program. It's on. So next Tuesday, April the seventeenth. At nine o'clock after the watershed yeah. on BBC Two, and then the following two weeks. And the first one is about the consequences of empire. Then we go out into the city and we look at the streets and the bars and hot sex, Mr. Hot Sex. <laughs> and then we go to the family and we think about kids, the home, um, women, what, what's marriage like, what's slavery like. Mm -hmm. That's. I really enjoyed making it. So. I'm, Terrified that people won't enjoy watching it. I'm sure it. they'll love it. Thank you very much. <laughs>